Hello, hot riders. This is Johnny Hunkins here, Popular Hot Riding Magazine, and I'm here with Nacho Aguilera. Yes, of, sir. Of Inland Empire Driveline Service, and we are here today because Nacho, which I believe Nacho, that's short for Ignacio, right? Yes, sir, it is. Right. Huh? <laughs> well, you know, if you got a cool nickname, the people like you. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here with Nacho to uh, measure the 1968 Plymouth Valiant for a drive shaft, and we're basically going to show you how Inland Empire goes about measuring for a drive shaft, and so that if you need a drive shaft, you will be able to measure it properly and give the measurements to them, and they'll send you a drive shaft. Now, if you live in the Southern California area, Inland Empire will actually come to your location to measure you. Is that right, Nacho? That's part of our deal, yes. Well, if you're local, on the local uh, city, uh, Ontario, Corona, Pomona, San Bernardino, Temecula, Hemet, if your vehicle is on a business, we'll be more than happy to take measurement for you. Well, that's a pretty darn good deal. Well, let's measure this thing and see what size we need. Let's do it. No and oil on it, far as you know? I, I don't believe there is, no. We've not fired this. It's a brand new TCI okay. 727 Super Street Fire okay. Trans. Okay. Well, now we know we have a 727 transmission. The measurement that you require for a driveline, it'll be from the end of the output shaft coming out of your transmission to the face of your pinion yoke. When I say face, you look up your pinion yoke to one of the... Uh, uh, ball holes. And you'll notice how he's measuring right to the flat surface. Is that right, Nacho? Off the pinion yoke. Yes, sir. Right on. And whatever number you get from there, that's all I need. Couldn't be any simpler. Very simple. Now, we need to find out how much output shaft you have at the end of your transmission. From the end of the seal, to the end of the output shaft. Right, and that looks like it's sticking out about what? An One inch, inch, inch and, and a quarter. quarter. Inch and a quarter. Now, if you don't know what size pinion yoke you have, you're probably going to need to measure it. And you measure it from inside the tap to inside the tap on this particular application. And we have three and five eighths. On your application, whatever you have on the on between the taps, that's what I need to know. I need to know the bearing cap diameter, which in this case we have inch and three sixteenths. Inch and three sixteenths. Yes. Three and three eighths wide. Three and five eighths wide. wide. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know what kind of pinion yoke you have, that's the best thing to do. You measure it. Well, here we are inside Inland Empire Driveline, and we're with Tomas here, who is the master technician. He builds a lot of the drive shafts here, and we got a couple of components here. Tell us what we got here, Tomas. Here we got a transmission yoke, a couple tube yokes, and a couple U joints to put a drive shaft together here. Well, we let's got our tube over there, and that'll be the last component we need to make it all together. Tomas, what do we got there that you're working on? Got a tubule, getting ready to push a U-joint into it so we can get this thing together. So what's this thing made out of? This thing looks like it's uh kind of colored uh, bronze. Uh, it's a black oxidized coating that we played them with to help keep them from rusting out. Wow. Tell us what you're going to do with this part. This is the rear U-joint, right? Yeah, this is the rear tube yoke and rear U-joint that we're putting together and be on the rear half of the drive cap. We're going through the same process of pressing this one together. This guy works fast. You can tell he makes a lot of money for Inland Empire drive shafts. Now what size is this? This is a 1350 series U-joint. 
found in Mobile. One ton bigger pickups, but it's also became a racer's dream. It will not break. No. Oh, that's good because we're going to have a lot of torque going through ours. Now, when Tomas was assembling these U joints, I kept noticing that he was uh, grabbing grease from this bucket right here. Looks like uh, EP Super Premium grease. And that goes into all of the joints prior to it going on your car. So it's, uh, it's pretty much lubricated, ready to go. No need to go in there and add any uh, additional lubricant. Is that right? Nope. These are solid OEM factory U joints. They're good. Once they're greased up, they're good for about 75,000 miles or so. Oh boy. I wish I could put that many miles on my car. Well, you guys might remember the other day when Nacho came out to Outlaw Motorsports and measured our drive shaft for today's assembly. This is the invoice, the order card that uh, Tomas is going to use. It tells him all the information he needs to make the right length drive shaft. What are we going to do next here? We're going to measure out the parts I have to get me the dimension I need. So. Now this is the piece that you just cut for our drive shaft, right Tomas? Yes it is. And what is this material? It's DOM mild steel. And what kind of diameter is this? This is 3 inch diameter with a wall thickness of 083. Okay, now we're putting it in the machine. We're going to flash it and get all the burrs and square it up. This assembly right here, this tooling fixture that Tomas is getting ready to use, is called a press welder. Is that right? Yes, sir. And it's basically going to press in the yoke on that side, right? And then, and then you're going to check the uh, the dimensions for it for run out. And then, if everything checks out okay, you're, you're going to weld it. Yes, I am. Great. Let's uh, get started on this thing. Okay. Here we go. Check the run out. Now, what do you like to see run out wise? What's like the maximum variation that you'll allow? On a brand new staff that we're putting together, we don't like to see no more than about five thousandths at the ends of the well. What about in the middle of the shaft? Do you check that? We check the middle, we don't like to see no more than about ten. But this is also tubing, and tubing doesn't seem to ever be true. So. All you can ask for is to get it as close as it can get. A couple of quick tacks. On the rear side, and a couple of tacks on the front side. And to check out the cool fixture that Tomas uses. Well, the welder is actually stationary, and he's rotating the drive. 
drive shaft with his hand, and the welder is running on its own. That is cool. Now it's time to cool off the welds. Now we go to the oxyacetylene torch where Tomas is going to straighten it. He's going to strategically heat it in certain places and then check the run out to make sure that it's straight. Because after you weld, uh, it does deform the metal and it does uh, potato chip a little bit. So he's checking it and he knows exactly where to apply the heat so that it'll go back into shape again. And notice how he just heated that up and he's putting some water on it strategically. And then he'll check it again with the run out and make sure that it's just the way he wants it. Now our drive shaft goes from the welding fixture to the balancing machine. This thing is huge and um, we're going to check out how it works right now. Now right here is the control unit for the RPMs and you can see it says 1872 RPM and this is where experience comes in because right now Tomas is feeling the fixture, the saddle right there for vibration to try to find out exactly what RPM any vibration is happening. Now this is a very interesting part of the balance machine. You've got numbers in there and then you've got some sort of feeler indicator there. Uh, go ahead and crank that up, Tomas, and show people what you're looking at. Ah, there's the numbers. It says six. So when you go to six, you index it on six, and that tells you to put some weight there. And Tomas has put a weight right on the place on the drive shaft exactly where he thinks it's going to eliminate the vibration. Now the drive shaft is running in the balancer and Tomas tells me that when that vibration on that dial indicator stops moving around, he's gotten rid of the vibration. So, you know, it's still bouncing around a little bit, but he's getting closer and closer to the right balance. Well, I'm feeling the saddle right here, and there is, I can feel no vibration in this thing. So if I get it out on the road, and I feel some vibration, I know that it's not in this drive shaft. That's absolutely incredible. All that remains for us to do to get this drive shaft finished is to weld the counterweight. And the last finishing touch is just a little bit of emery cloth. Give it a nice sheen. This is kind of a trademark treatment that Inland Empire does on their drive shafts. Sometimes they paint them, other times they leave them bare. Really depends. Since we're transporting ours in a car, we're not going to get ours painted until later. Well, that's how they make drive shafts here at Inland Empire Driveline. A uh, drive shaft like this with the 3, an three inch diameter DOM mild steel tubing, about 430 bucks. And I think that you'll all agree that it's well worth it after having seen what they go through to build them.